Hi everyone. So I'm really glad to be here to discuss about uh, robotics. But um, before I start explaining what is the robot and how at Hugging Face we are making AI for uh, robotics accessible, I would like to, to take a bit of time to reflect what's going on. Like every day, I am impressed by the new capabilities of our AI systems and uh, how fast they are adopted by people. Like 10 years ago, uh, my family didn't know much about what I was doing during my PhD. I was working on visual question answering at the time. It was not working super well. <laughs> and uh, now, 10 years after, everyone is using uh, LLMs every day. Uh, my parents are like uh, literally probing human knowledge with a, <laughs> with a chat interface. Um, and they are finding it very useful, and me including, like every day I use LLMs to code. It really, uh, I feel like empowered by this kind of tool. Um, what used to take me uh, maybe one week takes me a, a day. And um, the, the latest big thing I'm waiting for is, of course, AI becoming agentic and taking care of uh, some of the complexity of the digital world, like navigating uh, websites, uh, buying tickets. Um, I'm procrastinating for, for a few days. I need to buy a ticket uh, to London to see my friends. And uh, it could be nice to have this uh, AI agent. You just ask it, it, do, it does it. Uh, and I think it would allow us to really focus on what matters the most um, for us, like social connection, taking care of people. Um, and what's even more impressive to me is that the same techniques of LLMs and AI agents can now be applied to the physical world through robots. And this literally opens infinite possibilities. And to illustrate that, here is the most advanced AI. So it is uh, Pi Zero. It has been shown uh, uh, before lunch, so, uh, and Pi Zero fast as well. So this model, it was trained by Physical Intelligence, a company based in uh, California. And it, uh, they, they used Palygema. They fine-tuned it not to produce language tokens, but to produce action tokens. They are then tokenized, uh, detokenized into a sequence of motor angles. And so that's literally it. Tokens in, tokens out. There is no 3D representation or reconstruction or LIDAR or depth. It's just using standard cameras, cheap cameras, and the motor information. And then from, uh, I mean, the operator, you can see, it mess a bit with the, with the robot, and you can see that the AI is smart enough to correct and fold the shirt. And this kind of task were very difficult to um, automate before. And this is a very simple and general approach, because you just need to show uh, a few uh, times the task. So you control the robot. You have actually two arms be behind. Uh, there that you don't see here, that allows you to manipulate and, and fold the shirt. Uh, and you can do this for this task, but for any task. And we, one, year, one year ago, we, we saw this trend, and we wanted to, to create, at Hugging Face, um, Le Robot, uh, an open source library to make AI for robotics accessible, so that all this uh, technique, this technology, can go uh, uh, out of the labs and, and be used uh, at home uh, and, and by, by everyone, especially people who are not used to, to robotics. And so the robot is a collection of tools. So you have um, data sets, you have the possibility to host them for free on Hugging Face, to share them, to visualize them online. Uh, you also have pre-trained models, so we, we, uh, we have Pi Zero, um, so you can use it uh, in Python on, on your laptop. Uh, we, uh, we also have uh, a middleware in Python 
very efficient to communicate with a lot of different robots. Uh, and a community of uh, 4,000 people on, uh, um, on Discord that are very helpful and help us develop this tool. And so to make it accessible, we also wanted to develop a kind of full stack project and to develop our own robot arm so that you can uh, get started. So robots before, uh, they were really only in labs. It was super expensive, like $10,000 uh, just for one arm, even more. Uh, and now with this uh, simple arm, with $100, you can get one. Uh, yeah, you can get one. And we, we designed it with Rob Knight uh, from the Robot Studio. And you can order some kits online. Uh, so you have the 3D printing parts, uh, you have the motors, and uh, you can uh, assemble it uh, like a Lego. So we, uh, we have a tutorial online on our GitHub, GitHub page to train your AI on a simple uh, toy task just to reproduce the results and validate your setup. So we have the tutorial to assemble. You can do it with a child. Um, and then you can record trajectories with a laptop and phone cameras, and you teleoperate the robot. That's how you, you, you teach it. And then you train it on a Mac Pro or on a Linux uh, with uh, NVIDIA GPUs. Uh, for a while, it can take um, half an hour, for instance, to, to start seeing uh, generalization. And then you, you can evaluate it. You put the, the blocks. <laughs> it's a very simple task to grasp a Lego block. Um, you put it in uh, various spaces, and the robot generalizes it see from the cameras. If you hide the cameras, it messes up a, a bit with the robot. Um, uh, but anyway, so that's the kind of thing. Like A lot of people from um, the Discord, every day they send us some videos of uh, them uh, automating tasks at home. And, um, and if you assemble two arms, uh, then you can uh, automate more difficult, more challenging uh, cords at, at home, like the uh, folding clothes, like something that every, everyone does. Uh, but again, this is uh, a setup that costs roughly $400, and not tens of thousands of dollars, like I I it, was, it was shown at the beginning of the video. So again, it's, it's using uh, the laptop uh, camera, and, and on top, it's my iPhone. <laughs> so it really gets uh, you uh, um, into robotics uh, very fast. Uh, and thanks to open source, um, a lot of uh, people were able to reproduce this, this and build on top modify the robots for those who know about robotics. Uh, and even we had a very funny uh, contribution where s some people uh, attach a Muppet on our arm and were using the gripper to make it talk. They connected it to a, a VL, uh, VLM. And so you really had a language interface and you, have, you had your, your personal chief Muppet that, uh, that was uh, there to, to teach you uh, and help you how to cook things. Pretty practical when you don't know how to cook. <laughs> um, and also, we, uh, we, organize, we organize hackathons. Um, and uh, the last one was in Toulouse. And just in, uh, in over a weekend, people who never touched robotics before, even people who never touched AI, were able to assemble their robots, um, follow the tutorials, record some, some trajectories, and automate stuff. So uh, yeah, it's becoming very, very accessible. Also, we, um, we work with um, some students from a SIG Robotics Lab from University of Illinois, and we uh, developed together a base and extension with three wheels. And we can put any of the uh, arm we developed before on top. And then we can remote control it and, and, and teach it uh, many tasks that uh, require a wide range. So <laughs> we are not that far from uh, having a R2D2 at home uh, that can do some stuff. And, uh, 
Uh, and also, it's, I like it because it's a, it's kind of a small object, a bit uh, quirky, and uh, uh, yeah. so you can also order it and build it at home. And this very general approach, tokens in, tokens out, work for more capable robots, like this humanoid robot. It was developed by uh, Polen Robotics, a startup uh, in, uh, in Bordeaux. And here, we show that we can uh, discuss with it and ask to grasp for objects and so on. So you can see that uh, if you are in a situation of handicap, it can be very helpful to have this uh, kind of robots. Uh, uh, and uh, we had the pleasure to show it to uh, a dog. He was <laughs> totally impressed. <laughs> um, and uh, on the bottom left, you also see a uh, unitary robot, which is a, a very uh, important brand right now in humanoid uh, from China. And they are also using low robots to teach their uh, humanoid uh, how to manipulate. Um, and because we really want to explore uh, all the hot topics in robotics right now, we are also building a robot, a humanoid robot arm and hand. It costs like $500. And we developed this very simple glove, um, it's a kind of exoskeleton that allows us to teleoperate and so to uh, start recording data how to move the, the arm of the robot. Um, and uh, yeah, it's quite funny because uh, it works with a system of, uh, of tendons. In, uh, we use fishing nets, so it's quite solid. And uh, with very cheap components, you can build uh, those amazing robots that are becoming quite capable. So the next step, of course, is the, is the legs that we are currently building. So um, yes, build, uh, build your own robot. Um, uh, follow us on, uh, I mean, you can find all the, the tutorials on GitHub. And uh, join our community on Discord. I think you, uh, if you have any question, you will be able to find the solutions. But before I stop my talk, uh, I, I just wanted to, to say that uh, I would have never imagined to, uh, to work on robotics a few years ago. Um, I was really focused on uh, vision and language, but uh, I think that the, the impact of this technology can be uh, so profound uh, and possibly dramatic, if not done right, that we need more people working on this technology. Um, for instance, uh, there, there are uh, sovereignty concerns and uh, incredible challenges, uh, some like in safety or some in designing those interfaces, like how, to, how we will communicate to those robots. We don't really know yet. Uh, with this uh, open source project, it's the first uh, way to see how people are going to use them at home. Um, and also, a lot of uh, the knowledge that uh, you have, that you are uh, developing for uh, uh, LLMs, VLMs, audio, um, like agents, reasoning, this knowledge can be reused and uh, quite simply applied to robotics. Um, so, yeah, it, it has never been uh, the best time to start, and we are lucky to have this effort here in Paris. So, <laughs> um, so uh, yeah, I really, uh, really hope you will join us uh, in our next hackathon. So, yeah, thank you for your attention.